<laughs> What's good YouTube? Welcome to episode 14 of the survival tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to work on building our first large grid ship. It will be capable of interplanetary travel. Also, Keen Software House recently released the first update for the Xbox. And we're going to cover that at the very end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. And before we get started, I want to let you know that we are doing a new thing. Every week I'll be making a new tutorial that is a one-off tutorial, not part of the series, that will cover any specific thing. I'll be putting votes up while we can and letting you guys kind of vote on what comes up first. This week will be everything that I know about large grid ships, just like I did in the last tutorial for small grid ships. It will be released at 1 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, unless we meet the goal of 100 likes for this video. If we do meet that goal, I'll go ahead and release that as soon as that happens. So if you want to see it early, make sure you drop a like on this video. Okay, now that we're in creative mode, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to build your first large grid ship. We're going to go ahead and place this block here, and we're going to go into what's called symmetry mode. Since we are in creative mode, this will make things a lot easier, and I've had a request on how to do this lately. So if you're on the PC, the way that you're going to want to do this is you're going to hit the M button, as in man, and it's going to bring this little slice up here that goes through an axis of your block, and you can hit the M button multiple times to cycle through the different axes as well and the different sides so we're just going to go ahead and set this one up right here uh in the center because this is the way that we want to run it this actually makes a difference later because when you go to use your projection you're going to have to worry about what the first block you placed was because it works off of the first block so it'll pin the projection around that block and whenever you go to rotate or move it, it moves it around that single block. So that's why we want to go ahead and set symmetry mode up around this block. It just makes things easier when we go to print it later. But we're going to go ahead and click here. And that's going to lock that in. And you notice how it got a little bit brighter when we did that. And then you can hit the N as in Nancy button twice. And we're going to be locked in on that. So now when we place something like this, it will basically allow us to place blocks on both sides simultaneously. But we're going to get rid of this real quick so I can show you how to do it on the Xbox as well. By deleting the block there and starting over. So in order to do this on the Xbox, what you want to do is you want to place your first block as we did before. And then you're going to hold down the right button and then hit the X button. And that's going to allow you to set up your plane just like previously. In order to set the plane, you can change through the axes by hitting the down arrow. Choosing the plane that you want to set. And once you get through, it's going to exit out. So we're going to have to come back in with the right button and X once again. And choose which plane you want. We're going to choose the red plane here and then in order to lock this in we're just going to hit the right arrow key on the d-pad and it's locked in now we don't actually have to go and change things we just exit out of here and it's automatic but however if it's not automatic for you you can get in and out of this mode by hitting the left bumper and the left d-pad button here it'll switch you in and out as necessary so that's how you do symmetry mode in creative Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You might have to cycle through to turn it on or off. It's according to the way that you've got things set up. So we're just going to go through here and start building. For this episode, since we're going to be doing a lot of building, I'm actually going to be using mouse and keyboard just to make things a little bit easier for myself because you guys know the struggle of the controller with building. So what we're going to do here is we want to go ahead and start thinking about moving from planet to planet. And in order to do that, we're going to need a faster than light travel. So, so the next thing we want to do is we want to move from one planet to the other. We want to basically go to the moon. And in order to do that, if you go at the speed limit of Space Engineers, which is 100 meters per second, it will take you forever to reach the moon or any other planet for that matter. So we're going to use what's called jump drives. Now, jump drives are only available on large grid ships which is why we had to wait until we started our large grid ship to build them but we're going to go ahead and build about five of these because well we're, we can go with six that'll work out quite nicely because having more jump drives allows you to increase the speed at which they will charge and also allows you to increase the distance that you can travel for each jump so we're going to go ahead and add six jump drives here 
which should be plenty for the amount of weight that we're going to have. And just remember for every jump drive that you add, you're going to have to add extra batteries as well in order to keep them charging at full rate. So that's why we're going to limit ourselves to six, but we still want to have quite a few jump drives here. That way we can spend less time waiting and more time traveling. Now that we've got the jump drive set down here, we're going to go ahead and start on building basically a miniature base inside of this ship. So in order to do that, the first thing that we're going to need, we're going to need a medical room somewhere on the ship, which actually we'll hold off on the medical room here. We're going to need some assemblers. We're going to need some refineries. We're going to want a beacon. We're going to want large cargo containers. We're going to want some large reactors. We're going to want a gravity generator, and that should be enough for now. So the first thing we need to do is we need some storage here. Anytime that you build a base, you're going to need storage, obviously. So we're just going to place some storage right here, and we're going to keep all of this symmetrical for now. If you're playing a multiplayer PvP style game, which pretty much I don't think anyone on the Xbox is at the moment because they don't have the servers available. But if you are playing on a server, so if you're on PC playing on a server and you want to worry about the PvP, I recommend not putting things close together here. We will be getting into that once they release servers for the Xbox. But for now, it doesn't really matter because we're only going to be fighting pirates and we're going to have automatic defenses on this ship in order to take care of the pirates for us. So we don't really have to worry too much. We're going to add some decoys and stuff like that to make them attack places other than where our stuff is. So we should be fine. But if you're playing PvP, you really want to think about where you place all of this stuff. Okay, so now that we've gotten quite a few cargo containers in here, we're going to go ahead and place our first refinery. Now the thing to think about when you're placing something like a refinery is you notice how it's not completely symmetrical around the block itself, right? So what's going to happen here is if we place this, you're going to notice it's not really symmetrical here. It's going to line up the conveyor ports at the same place. It's not going to worry about the rotation or anything like that. So what we're going to do in order to fix that is we're going to delete this one and we're going to current we're going to temporarily cut off our symmetry mode so we can place these we're going to place we basically want this side to be facing in, into here that way we can hide our modules there and place them like that now that that's done we can cut it back on by facing one of the blocks it doesn't matter what block and just hitting the end button it'll cut your symmetry mode back on and then we're going to place two assemblers here so those line up perfectly and I know this isn't exactly symmetrical but it still looks pretty decent to me so a little off symmetry is not going to hurt anyone I don't think and we're going to want to put some speed modules on here as well so I'm going to go ahead and grab those up and since we're in symmetry mode right now we're going to need to cut that off or else as you see it's going to try to place them over to the side over or on the other side where there's nothing to connect to, so we're just going to cut the symmetry mode off for this too and place our speed modules. Now, a thing to note about the speed modules is it doesn't matter which direction you place them in. As long as they're touching two of these connectors for the modules here, you can place them like that or you can place them like this. It doesn't really matter, and you can even place them in between two different refineries or assemblers if you want to. As long as both of those connectors are connected to a speed module, that's all that matters. It works the same way either way. In order to line these up right, we're just going to do it that way. And we're going to go ahead and toss some batteries in here just to get rid of all this red light that we got going on here. We're going to be placing batteries all over the place as well just in case we get attacked. And this will give us a nice little place to see how our batteries are on charging. And you notice everything is charging up now. So these right here, these jump drives will actually charge up off the battery now that we've got batteries we're gonna have to worry about some reactors as well so let's go ahead and add our reactors we're gonna need some way to charge the batteries I'll turn symmetry mode back on now that we can use it four large reactors is gonna be quite a lot and that's gonna give us plenty of power I think we're going to be adding a small little drill rig to this ship in order to help us grab uranium whenever we come by it so now that we're thinking about that, let's go ahead and add our beacon just in case we have to leave the ship for any reason. 
And attached to that, we're going to put a large grid ore detector. And we're just going to place that in the floor. I'm just going to place all these things with the cool little light shows and stuff like the jump drives here and the beacon. Anything that shows light, I'm going to place it in the floor. And we're going to leave that open on our floor just so we can see it. I think it just adds a little bit of flair to the ship itself. Now that we've gotten that done, we have two refineries and two assemblers which should be enough for now. It's going to not be the fastest setup that we could possibly have, but we're not too worried about the speed of this ship. This is going to be basically, it's going to be our mobile base. We're going to go from planet to planet and basically put this in orbit of the planet, and we're going to do all of our operations from this ship from now on. It doesn't really matter how long it takes for it to refine everything. As long as it's got enough storage will be perfectly fine we also want to think about where our cockpit's going to be about right now what i like to do is i like to lay the ship out and basically get the layout of the ship before i start any of the extra stuff such as styling or anything like that so we're going to go ahead and just get the basic layout of the ship. So we're going to put the cockpit up here. Instead of putting a cockpit, we're going to actually use one of these control seats. They look a lot better if you ask me. I think these look like an actual starship control seat. So we're going to use that instead. And that's going to let us know about how far we want to go forward on our ship. And we're also going to have to start thinking about the fact that we want to use, we want to have hangar bays because we're going to have little ships that we're going to take off of here. So that means I'm going to just basically leave these spots here open for connectors. That way we can dock our, our ships that are going to be in our hangar bay directly to the connectors. That's one of the things to think about as well is where you're going to put your conveyors. That's going to be a big deal early. So you want to make sure that whenever you set your ship up, you're thinking about your conveyor placement early. And I'm just basically placing a wall between everything and where our hangar bay is going to be. And we will have two hangar bays. That way we can have plenty of stuff available for the ship. Maybe some miners, ore detector, ship, and things along that line. This will leave us, if we set it up like this, that'll leave us, let's see, a grand total of 12 ships that we can attach here, which will be quite nice. 12 small ships. Okay, so now that we've gotten that done, we want to start thinking about what we're going to do for some sort of crew quarters, because we can't make this ship completely functional without any good looks or anything so i'm just gonna basically build us a little platform up here i think our crew quarters will be directly above where we have our control area here and we can move this all out one more we're gonna pretty much have to anyway because we can't place the glass right in front of that so that's gonna be our crew quarters up here and down here is gonna be in fact let me move this forward just one more here that way we can move around our control seat here. And we can have this whole area in here for like a bridge area. And this will be the crew quarters. That way you can get a nice view of what's going on in the front of the ship. Now that we've got that done, we want to start thinking about what we're going to do for defenses as well. Because we're going to be getting to that point pretty soon. So we need to think about how we're going to supply everything through supplier turrets with ammo so i'm just going to put a floor here and i'm going to leave all these conveyor ports open just for so we know in the future where they're at and that'll let us have an idea of where we want to place our turrets and such and i'm going to go ahead and add in some flooring here so now we can start working on our hangar bay a little bit you notice how i'm just basically laying out the ship right now and then we're going to come back through later and do the styling because that way you're sure you don't miss out on anything we are going to need a gravity generator so we're going to put that on the very back back here that way we don't have to worry about using jet fuel while we're inside and we don't have to worry about magnetic locking or anything like that we can jump around run around inside so that's not a big deal there and we're going to have to think about a way to get from this room here into the hangar bay. So let me look to see where our hangar bay is at. 
So we can put us a small little airlock here in the hangar bay and just come through up underneath the reactor here to come out. So let's go ahead and put a door. And we need to think about how we're going to make our way into the hangar bay as well. This is going to be a little bit close to this. So I don't know if that's going to work for an airlock. We're going to have to move this over. Let's see. Can we fit in here when we come out? No, we can't. Okay, that'll work. Basically, we're setting it up to where we can come through here and turn in here and just come in the back of the ship here. And we can use this as the back wall here. So that'll work out perfectly fine. I'm just thinking of a way that we can set up an airlock with sensors to where we don't have to open the doors ourselves. And we can put our wall up right there. And that'll leave us a good way to get in and out. Okay, so that's pretty much the base portion of the ship done. That's everything I think that we need at the moment. If we need to, we can always add in some extra stuff later. Now I need to start thinking about how we're going to lay the ship out. I don't necessarily want such a high ceiling in here. So I'll probably start playing around with that a little bit. I'll pro I'm going to go ahead and do some styling before we get ready for the thrusters and all of that fun stuff. But one thing we will have to do is start adding in a few gyroscopes here. So I think we can fit some gyroscopes back here. Let's go ahead and add those. We want to put gyroscopes pretty much everywhere in the the ship, by the way. We don't want them all in one place, just in case we get attacked and the gyros get taken out. It's never a good idea to put all your gyroscopes in one place that way, or anything like that, for that matter. If you want a truly functional ship, then it's a good idea to just basically place things all over. That way, no single hit can ever take you out fully. If that works for both pirates and players as well because the pirates can actually target specific things in your ship. However, there are ways around that through the use of things such as decoys and things like that, which we will be using before this is over with. I think the next thing we're going to do here is lay out what we're going to do for our hangar base. So we're just going to basically make a little bit of a box right here just so we can see where we need to go with it and that's not going to work we're going to need to bring this out just a little bit here and that'll give us room to park our ships right there so i'm just basically building the box around the hangar bay just to see what the layout's going to be that way i can build it okay so we're going to have some small ships through here we're not going to make them too wide or anything like that so that'll work out quite nicely let me go ahead and grab some conveyors and I'm going to use the actual conveyors there instead of just connecting connectors to it, making it recess back up into the wall. We can actually recess it if we want to, but we're not going to. The reason why is because that's going to create an airtight seal, and we are actually going to be making this whole thing airtight as well. So we're going to go ahead and start placing our connectors here just so we know where they're at. And each one of these spots right here, we can place a ship and be directly connected to a cargo container. So that's pretty awesome there. We have a basic area for our hangar bay set up. And one thing we're going to have to worry about as well is going to be a second floor down here. And the reason why we want to do a second floor is so we can connect some oxygen tanks and some hydrogen tanks because we will have some hydrogen powered stuff. So we're going to go for oxygen tanks we're going to go for oxygen or o2 generators and we're going to go for hydrogen tanks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place the hydrogen tanks down here we've got two of those we're going to need quite a few of the oxygen tanks because this is going to be a decent amount of area that we have to worry about here so we're going to place those down there and then we're going to place the o2 generators as well we're going to need that so we're going to go for looking at the connections here we're going to have to basically place that to where yeah, right here. There we go. That's one. And I think we're going to place one. We don't want to go too low on that. So I think that might be about it for that part. And we're just going to place one headed back this direction. And that'll give us connections on the back too if we want to. I'll just probably place some connectors so we can dock from the outside as well. So that'll work out quite nicely. And these are all connected up to all of the piping in the base too. So 
there's going to be the rear of the ship. I think we've got everything that we're going to need now except for actually placing some some air vents here. So let's go ahead and add some air vents in as well. I'm going to add more than one that way if we do depressurize it's going to pressurize quicker. We're going to add about four of them in here because that will speed the process up quite dramatically. Now we'll just finish up our hangar bays here just to get the, the box shape that we want for the hangar bay figured out. I need to figure out how far I want to go, go forward. So I think this should be far enough. We're just going to go ahead and build everything through here. Now I haven't figured out how to do all of this right here that I'm doing in using the, using the keyboard and mouse here I haven't figured out how to do all of this with the controller if anyone's figured that out please let me know I don't know if you're available or if that's available on the controller at the moment which is one of the main reasons why I like to build in creative mode it's just it, it's a lot easier to lay planes and stuff like that of blocks and it makes the, your your entire life easier hopefully they've got it on the Xbox as well if anyone's figured that out, like I said, let me know and we'll definitely do a quick tutorial on that. So the thing to think about here when you're building your hangar bay is we've got these airtight hangar blocks that only go for about three blocks here, which there you have to have a specific size hangar. There are ways around that to where they'll work better. Let me go ahead and get this set right. There we go. And we're going to come in here and close this up just to make sure it's the right size. I think you need six empty blocks in order to use them correctly. So we're just going to come into the thing here and close them just so we can see how they line up. I believe these will line up perfectly, actually. Yes. So sometimes I like to recess these down into the floors if the size is right. But since we're going to have extra vehicles here for the hangar bay we're not going to worry too much about that so now we can go ahead and place an entire line here and an entire line here this is going to be a bit of a pain later in the way i'm doing it here because i don't have them marked which one's the top which one's the bottom which one's the left and which one's the right so i'm gonna have to go through and basically figure that out on my own it will be a bit of a pain but one way around that would be to actually let's go ahead and get rid of these and do it the right way so we can make it easier on ourselves now that we know that they're the right size. So we're just going to delete all of them here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to cut the symmetry mode off. And then we're just going to lay one row at a time so we can basically group these together into specific groups so we know what's what here. So we're going to do those and this group here is the only group of them that we have. So th these hair airtight hangar doors are going to be named. That's going to be the hangar doors. Upper left. So they're on the left side facing the view of the cockpit. And they are on the top. So we're going to save that group here. And we're just going to hide these on the HUD now. Because we don't really need these. Or we're going to hide these in the terminal now. We don't really need them. We have the entire group here. Hangar doors upper left. And we're going to basically go through and do that for all four sets of hangar doors here. So we're going to make another set of hangar doors here. We're going to come back through here and we're going to group these up. This is something that you really want to do whenever you've got a ton of objects such as this. Like these speed modules here. I'm going to go ahead and hide those two while I'm at it. You want to try to keep everything as clean as possible while you're working. That way you don't hiding things that you don't need to, to worry about and things like that really helps out quite a bit grouping things and then hiding them is a really smart way to do it as well so this is going to be hangar door lower left and save and now we can hide these as well on the terminal so now we've got the upper left and lower left for hangar doors we let me change this name a little bit so it looks better in fact that's going to be doors for both of them so there we go and we can delete that one. All right, so now that that one's done, that side's done, we're going to do the same thing over on the other side here. Okay, so now that 
that's done, I can go ahead and hide this last one here. And we've got all four of these set up. This will make it easier whenever we go to set our sensors up. So thinking ahead like this is always a good idea. We can hide the air vents as well. We are not going to need to show them. We're not going to need to show the batteries either. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these. So hiding all of this stuff here is probably a really good idea. Just basically hide everything and only show it when you need to. That way you don't really mess up with your terminal stuff here. And you can see what you need when you need it. it makes a lot of sense. And... If you're doing a big build like we are right now, it's probably a good idea to do so. I'm going to group our jump drives as well. Because we're going to need a group for those later. And I'm going to hide those. And that should clean it up enough for now. We'll go back through it and work on cleanup later. But doing these things as you build is probably the smart thing to do. That way it's done and you don't have to worry about it later. So now that we've gotten all of this done, let me get rid of this one. And now that we've gotten all of this done, it's time to start thinking about how we want this thing to look. I've got a general idea of how I want it to look here. And this layout is actually a little bit right for that. I'm going to go ahead and start doing a little bit of shaping of the ship here and get it the way that I, we want it to be. That way we can start thinking about the placement of our thrusters and stuff like that just a little bit of styling okay so I've got some basic styling down so far all I did was basically just shaped up the front a little bit better and the sides here just a tad bit better than it was I'm not completely finished with the styling or the air tightness of it yet I've got to figure out what I want to do on the bottom here and then I've come around the back as well and just added a little nook that we can start tossing some large thrusters in. So let's go ahead and start on the thrusters. So we need to figure out where we need to put these before we go too much further. So we're going to put two large thrusters on the back here. And then we're going to start putting smaller thrusters here in these little areas right here. This is something I like to do is use a combination of large thrusters and small thrusters. I think that looks so much better. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments if you think that looks good or not, or if you've got any better way to do it. But I like the combination of large and small thrusters on the back. I've always liked that combination in just about every game that I've played. So we're just going to go ahead and start placing thrusters in every direction here so we can figure out exactly how we want to finish this off. We're going to need a lot of thrusters for this ship, though. It's, it's kind of big. But I like to recess the thrusters as much as possible like we're doing here. So I'm not going to be able to do that. Let me fix this up. And now we can start building around these thrusters once we get them laid out a little bit better. It's probably a good idea to start laying thrusters before you start working on finishing the touches on the way that you want everything to look. That way you can build little armor enclosures and stuff like that around it. Helps out quite a bit. Now I'm also making this airtight right here just so we can start placing our thrusters down here. I'm not sure if thrusters are 100% airtight or not. So we're just going to make all this airtight. That way we don't have to worry about leaking out the bottom. Okay, I'm pretty sure I made that all airtight right there. Now we can start thinking about where we're going to place our lower thrusters here. And I'm also going to toss a few extra gyroscopes down in this little nook that we've got going here. Just so we've got them all over the place, like I said. Because this is going to require a lot of gyroscopes in order to maneuver correctly. This is going to be a pretty quick ship, actually, I think. We've got quite a few thrusters. I had a lot more spots for thrusters than I thought I did. I can go ahead and get rid of these two because I don't really need those. And they're kind of out of place up there. We can place them down in this area here. Or this will give us a place to hide our gyroscopes as well. So I'm just going to go for an entire plane here. There we go. We now have the bottom of our ship nice and tidy. Now I just need to do a little bit of work here to make this look better okay it looks like we've got everything pretty much styled the way that i want to do it it's not the best looking ship that i've ever done in my life but it's decent looking and it's definitely functional now what we need to worry about is we've got an issue at the moment to where 
we need to worry about protecting some stuff from pirates. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a little thing off to the side here. And I'm going to add some decoys to the outside of the ship here. And we could leave it just like that if we wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually worry about just basically hiding this behind some heavy armor here. And in order to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to build an armor block. I'm going to build a one layer armor block around it. Just like this. That way we've got, and this will be heavy armor that I'm using here. I'm not using heavy army armor for most things because they're way more expensive than the regular armor. And this should hopefully, under the right circumstances, be the only thing getting attacked. So we should be okay. That's the whole point of the decoy is they will attack it first. And hopefully by the time that they can knock our decoys out, we've already taken care of them. And this is mainly for the AI in the game. Obviously, players won't attack your decoys. Okay, now that I've got our decoys placed here, we should be pretty much good to go. I don't, I can't think of anything right offhand that we need to add other than giving some defenses here. So let's go ahead and do some turrets. We're going to want missile turrets and we're also going to want regular Gatling turrets. Um... The interior turrets don't have quite the range that the Gatling turrets have, so I like to place both the, like I said, missile turrets and Gatling turrets here. We're basically going to line this up with Gatling turrets all along the bottom and just one miss set of missile turrets up front. We don't want to overdo the missile turrets, obviously, because they'll blow up way more than we want. And we're going to place two Gatling turrets underneath as well. That way... Or three Gatling turrets will work fine. Or actually, we're going to do two Gatling turrets and a missile turret on the bottom. That way, we've pretty much got coverage wherever we want to. We're going to max... The first thing we want to do, though, is we want to go in here and make sure they're at max range. So let's come through here and search for turrets. So they start out at 600 meters. We're going to go ahead and place them all the way up. And that should be 800 meters for pretty much everything there. So now we are pretty safe. That's almost an entire kilometers distance. And these will auto the turrets will automatically target and attack if you tell them to and we'll set all that up. I think in order to get some more protection in the rear as well, we're going to toss a couple turrets back here. And I think the front isn't really all that well protected at the moment. It's it's decently protected. It's got a couple of missile turrets up front, so we should be okay. Like I said, there's a 800 meter range on these, so I think that'll be just fine. And now the last thing that we need to do is start worrying about making all of this airtight. So we're going to take some windows here. I'm going to grab the 1x1 flat, the 1x1 flat inverted... And the one by one slope and inverted slope as well. I don't remember if there is an inverted slope here. I don't believe there is. So we're just going to place our first window here. That's going to be a little bit weird because we don't have the inverted slope. So that's going to be a little dark off to the sides. But if we come in here and we add the inverted, we can place these right here. And it'll be nice and clear on the front. And it'll be dark from the outside. And then we're just going to come up here and we're going to do the same ones here. And I need to worry about putting some lights in here. Alright, I think I'm done with the ship for now. I have it fully painted and I finished up the insides as well. Went ahead and made most of it airtight here. The only thing I have to do now is set up the airtightness for the entryway here, which is pretty simple. All I need to do for that is to add a, a door. Or two. There we go. And we're going to leave the doors the standard paint color as well. And now we can just go ahead and close these doors up. And we should be airtight at this point. There we go. Yeah, we're airtight and filling up pretty quickly, actually. There is one minor issue that I have here. I think I might want to work something around this spot right here. Actually, that's the what we'll do. We'll just get rid of one of the sets of gyroscopes there so it'll be easier to come in and out of here because you'll fall down this little hole here if you're not careful but 
basically this is what I've got done in here I have the cockpit area in here I haven't filled this up like I want to quite yet I'll work on that in the future and we've got us a little living area up here unfortunately I couldn't keep from bringing some of the paint inside in order to get the outside painted but that's perfectly acceptable but I think this one is completely ready to go and I'm gonna hop in real quick and give it a quick test run and see how it works we do have the doors open so let me close those up real quick all right so all I did was chose all of the hangar door groups that we had and just hit closed on them and they should close up quite nicely here yeah there they go and this is basically our overall finished product here let's give it a quick test see how quickly it accelerates and decelerates it doesn't have to be the quickest at acceleration and deceleration here because this is just basically a large ship that we're gonna fly around it will be kind of chunky but that's perfectly acceptable and we have all of that set up good now let's give it a test real quick with the jump drives I'm gonna go ahead and put the jump drives here and I'm going to put they should be completely charged up as well we're gonna go ahead and choose jump for our bar here and I believe that should work out pretty nicely so we've got about right at 5,000 kilometers distance that we can jump so we'll go ahead and do a test jump awesome so that worked out quite nicely I believe we are ready to think about putting this thing into action in our main world and that will be the next episode we're gonna have to create a 3d printer specifically for it as well on May 15th, 2020, Keen Software House released their first update to Space Engineers for the Xbox One. We will quickly cover what has changed and how it will affect you as a player. The new features include planets, increased player counts in multiplayer, and increased PCU limit. Coming in the next patch should be the Frostbite DLC and dedicated servers. They have introduced four new planets including Europa, Triton, Alien Planet, and Titan. They have also included variants of the star system scenario with deadlier meteor showers. Europa is a moon that orbits the Mars-like planet. This planet is almost entirely composed of ice. It has a very thin atmosphere, which makes atmospheric thrusters useful and ion thrusters less efficient. This atmosphere does not contain oxygen. It also has around 0.25 G worth of gravity. Triton is a newer planet introduced in the Frostbite DLC release. It is an icy planet with an oxygen atmosphere. Triton contains every ore except uranium and platinum. It is also considered to be an easy start planet. It has a gravity of 1G. The alien planet is a higher gravity planet with 1.1G, a non-breathable atmosphere in every ore except uranium and platinum. This planet is considered a hard start planet. If you have the AI for spiders enabled, they will appear on the alien planet. Titan is the moon of the alien planet. It contains a small, non-breathable atmosphere. Spiders also appear on this moon. It contains every ore except for uranium and has a gravity of 0.25 G. Enabling experimental mode in your main game options will now allow an increased player limit and increased PCU limit. Experimental mode can be buggy. As of the recording of this video, it will limit the number of pages available for assignable d-pad functions to one. The new player count limit in experimental mode has been increased from 2 to 4 on Xbox One and from 4 to 6 on Xbox One X. The PCU limit has increased from 100k to 200k in single player and from 50k to 100k in multiplayer. This will allow you to build larger and more complicated ships and bases. This series has been adjusted accordingly. There are now more graphical options available for the Xbox One and Xbox One S. These include grass density, visibility distance, and improved shading. Things to look forward to in future updates include the Frostbite DLC, which includes new blocks, paint textures, and the ability to paste the planet Triton into an existing world. Following the DLC release, they will be working on dedicated servers and limited scripting support. The current implementation of scripting in Space Engineers is incompatible with Microsoft's policy on code execution as it requires pre-compiled code. 
Space Engineers currently uses just-in-time scripting, which does not require pre-compiled code. They are working on a fix for this. The introduction of scripts will be major to this guide series and will require us to restart the tutorial series in order to make full advantage. Glad you enjoyed the video. How about dropping a like to let me know that you did. Also, if you haven't already, think about subscribing and hitting the bell notification to be notified when a new video goes live. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.